dear participants welcome to week 3 module 1 in our course in this module we would look at the expressions which are communicated during our interactions with the help of our mouth as well as with smiles we would check how different type of emotions are communicated with the help of our mouth different shapes of it as well as smiles from happiness to sorrow from fear to disgust different type of emotions are communicated with the shapes of mouth and our smiles it seems that we are never given any formal training in our interpretation of facial expressions however whether it is owing to our cultural and social conditioning or it is because of our innate evolutionary processes most of the times we are able to communicate with the help of our face in any face to face situation our face is one of the most powerful communication tools and particularly in the situations where we have to talk a lot during our business affairs during our professional commitments we find that often we try to interpret the facial expressions of other people at the same time another aspect of our social interaction is the fact that most people believe the facial expression more than the content which has been communicated with the help of words our face has eyes and mouth which are the most communicative organs in our human body we have looked at communication through eyes the way our eyes communicate different levels of feelings and emotions and how the cultural variations in their interpretation exist today we shall look at the positioning of the mouth and smiles mouth plays a major role in communication of our emotions the shapes which our mouth takes are also supported by our teeth and our tongue you would find that it is interesting to note that even the routine activities which are conducted with the help of our mouth for example speaking to others the very fact of speech and at the same time talking even eating communicate a lot about the personality the background etc and are like clues to understanding the personality of other people at the same time we interpret the smiles and at the same time we also become conscious if the smiles are absent so our smiles as well as laughter the presence and absence of these also matter in order to communicate our emotions and personality types the shape of the mouth normally communicates evaluation gestures later on when we would look at the finger movements as well as hand gestures we would look at how hands and fingers and their placing on different parts of our face modify the originally communicated meaning however we would find that even without hands and fingers our mouth communicates certain ideas the shapes our mouth takes are important markers during any dialogue whether it is offline or it is online in our face to face communication we make out the meanings on the basis of different clues before the decision is made and it is formalized and verbalized our understanding of expressions which have been communicated with the help of mouth shapes give us a window of time during which we can negotiate and since the other person has not exactly said that there is still some space to persuade others the first expression which is often communicated with the help of our lips is that of pursed lips it is an evaluative gesture often it shows disagreement or an anger which is being suppressed even if it is not an anger you would find that some type of disapproval is normally communicated sometimes particularly in consonance with other gestures of hand and fingers it also communicates indecision withholding of information a way of hedging words so that 
you do not commit yourself suddenly. So, you would find that pursed lips communicate a feeling which is definitely not an open one. Pouting of mouth shows displeasure. Often you would find that when a young child feels insulted or feels isolated or is not able to get what she had desired, then often the pout is visible. Even in adults, you would find that doubts about self-image as well as a flirtation is indicated with the help of this pout. Different cultures associate it in different degrees as far as our understanding of gendered behavior is concerned. In many cultures, we would find that pouting behavior is considered to be appropriate for young girls and inappropriate for young boys. Puckered up lips and pout, particularly when the top lip has protruded over the bottom lip, then even though we are not biting it, then it indicates a feeling of guilt whether an individual has been caught or not during the action. On the other hand, if the bottom lip has protruded over the top lip, it indicates a feeling of uncertainty or ambivalence that one is unwilling to express with the help of words. If the bottom lip has jutted out in a pout, it indicates a petulance which is often considered to be immature. So, puckered lips and pout often communicate feelings of uncertainty as well as an indirect admission or at least consciousness of one's guilt. Flattened lips which are also known as lip press and as this photograph very clearly indicates, suggests a repressed desire to speak which is very obviously understood. Flattened lips or lip press occur when there is an excessive almost forceful closing of the lips. So, whereas this particular shape of the mouth indicates that a person does not want to speak something which is going on in his or her mind, then it also simultaneously communicates a fear of disapproval, distress or frustration. The person is afraid that if she ends up saying that, she may have to face repercussions of it or at the same time, the person is feeling so distressed that she does not have words to vocalize this feeling. Often we find that this feeling of disapproval and distress is directed towards oneself rather towards the other person during the dialogue. This particular position of mouth also tells us a lot about the psychological turbulence which goes on inside a person during our conversations. Biting lips or chewing on the lips also indicates fear, a sense of anxiety which is underlying in our personality and at the same time a certain lack of decisiveness in the given situation. It can also be interpreted as a lack of comfort in a given situation. Biting on the lips, whether centrally or at the side, indicates anxiety. Often we find that in this action, it is the lower lip which is often bitten. Sometimes it becomes a habitual action also with people and with those people with whom it is a habitual action. We can almost predict situations in which this particular gesture would be indicated by them. They shall often repeat it in a predictable manner. At moments, we find that it can be a comforting gesture also because by biting on the lips, the person is able to give vent to the underlying anxiety to a certain extent and the next phase of conversation or thought process can therefore be slightly more confident. Similarly, we find that biting on one's lips or chewing on the lip is also an indication that the person may be lying either in a blatant manner or even partially. In any case, you would find that this particular action does not indicate an openness. There are certain reservations in the person and these reservations are further to be decoded with the help of other expressions, micro expressions and the words which might follow later on. The next type of 
position of mouth which we shall take up is known as sucked lips or swallowed lips because this particular action suggests as if one is trying to swallow the lips themselves. So, it normally indicates that the person is in deep thought and this deep thought is not a creative thinking rather it is a critical thinking. So, it is an evaluatory manner of looking at things when we are evaluating the content and at the same time we think that this might be an important message either to us or more to the other person often we are talking to. In addition to be associated with the evaluation of content, we also find that this particular position is taken up by a person inadvertently and unconsciously when the person has to pass on an important message to others and often this important message suggests something negative to the receiver. In some people we would find that this becomes a habit and there is a psychological dependence on this particular type of an action. A psychological dependence and overdoing of this action suggests a deep problematic state of mind which should be further investigated into. Similarly, we find that there are some other interesting positions which our mouth is capable of taking. A particularly interesting one is known as which I presume all of us can understand easily. This is also considered to be an important micro expression because we find that often the twitch occurs in the corners of the mouth in almost an imperceptible manner. It shows a passive form of cynicism or a sense of disbelieving others, but at the same time the other person does not want to exhibit this cynicism or disbelief in a very open manner. And therefore, we often find that twitching does not occur for a prolonged period in most of the instances. Sometimes we find that it can be associated with the behavior of those people who are trying to pass on a lie but are not habitual liars and they may give themselves away with these small grimaces because their conscience may disapprove of this action. During this particular movement of the mouth, we find that corners of the mouth are turned upwards and this upward movement of the mouth is associated with emotions of happiness. It may be the beginning of a smile of pleasure or amusement or mirth, but at the same time we find that corners of the mouth are turned downwards almost immediately and this downward inclination indicates negative emotion. So, twitching normally occurs whenever there is a contradiction going on in the mind of the person. Another important communication of messages is done when a person covers the mouth with the help of hands or certain fingers and this is also associated with different types of emotional reactions. This particular aspect of covering the mouth we will cover when we will look at hand movements and finger movements in our next modules. The next facial expression which we shall take up is the smile. All of us know the significance of smiles. It is associated with positive indications of our emotions normally. Of all emotions which can be communicated by our body, we find that our smile is the most contagious one it almost always has a positive smile. Therefore, we also have different social perceptions in almost all the cultures where a smiling face is considered to be more likable, open and friendly, better approachable and at the same time more competent. Almost all of us are able to understand the difference between a genuine smile and a synthetic or a plastic smile. It was Darwin who had initiated, studied in what can be understood as a science of smiling. He noticed that the cause, consequences and manifestations of a smile are universal. A face that smiles is normally considered to be friendly. But what about a face which never smiles? So the absence of a smile on a face can often be disconcerting. 
At the same time, when a person smiles too much, it also is considered to be negative. Definitely, it is not associated with any positive feelings. And here I have quoted from two literary understandings of those personalities where too much of smiling is manifested. The first one is a quote from the British novelist Eric Amler, known more for his spy thrillers, and he has described one constant smiling as a standing apology for the iniquity of his existence. In the same way, G. K. Chesterton has also expressed similar reservations when the presence of too much smile on a human face makes it rather kindly at first glance, but at the second glance, the same presence of continued smile makes a person look rather cowardly. So, you would find that the smile, its presence, its absence and too much presence are all noted by all our interactants. This particular video gives a very interesting assessment of the significance of smiles and also covers normally understood types of smiles. Most of the basic communication signals are the same all over the world. When people are happy, we smile. When we are sad or angry, we frown or scowl. Smiling serves the purpose of telling another person you are non-threatening and ask them to accept you on a personal level. Lack of smiling explains why many dominant individuals such as Vladimir Putin, Clint Eastwood, always seem to look grumpy or aggressive and are rarely seen smiling. We simply don't want to appear in any way submissive. Scientific research in courtrooms shows that an apology offered with a smile incurs a lesser penalty than an apology without one. Most people can't consciously differentiate between a fake smile and a real one, and most of us are content if someone is simply smiling at us, regardless of whether it's real or false. From a psychological point of view, in some situations, smile and laughter are defensive mechanisms. That's why distinguishing a fake smile from a genuine one is important if you want to understand people and their emotions. Smiles are controlled by two sets of muscles. The zygomaticus major muscles, which round down the side of the face and connect to the corners of the mouth, and the orbicularized oculi, which pull the eyes back. The zygomaticus majors pull the mouth back to expose the teeth and enlarge the cheeks, while the orbicularized oculi make the eyes narrow and cause crow's feet. These muscles are important to understand because the zygomaticus majors are consciously controlled. In other words, they are used to produce false smiles or fake enjoyment to try to appear friendly or subordinate. The orbicularized oculi at the eyes act independently and reveal the true feelings of a genuine smile. In the enjoyment smile, not only are the lip corners pulled up, but the muscles around the eyes are contracted, while non-enjoyment smiles involve just the smiling lips. Genuine smiles are generated by the unconscious brain, which means they are automatic. When you feel pleasure, signals pass through the part of your brain that processes emotion, making your mouth muscles move, your cheeks rise, your eyes crease up and your eyebrows dip slightly. Photographers ask you to say cheese because this word puts back the zygomaticus major muscles. Lines around the eyes can also appear in intense fake smiles and the cheeks may bunch up, making it look as if the eyes are contracting and that the smile is genuine. Image C. However, when the smile is genuine, the fleshy part of the eye between the eyebrow and the eyelid, the eye cover fold, moves downwards and the end of the eyebrows dip slightly. Image D. So the first place to check the sincerity of a smile is to look for wrinkle lines beside the eyes. 6 most common types of smile Number 1. The tight-lipped smile The lips are stretched tight across the face to form a straight line and the teeth are concealed. It sends the message that the smiler has a secret or a withheld opinion or attitude that we will not be sharing with you. The tight-lipped smile is also seen in magazine pictures of successful businessmen who are communicating I've got the secrets of success and you've got to try and guess what they are. In these interviews, the men have a tendency to talk about principles of success but rarely do they reveal the exact details of how they succeeded. Number 2. The Twisted Smile This smile shows opposite emotions on each side of the face. The right brain rises the left side eyebrow, the left zygomaticus muscles and left cheek to produce one type of smile on the left side of the face, while the left brain pulls the same muscles downwards on the right side to produce an angry frown. When you place a mirror down the middle at an angle of 90 degrees to reflect each side of the face, you produce two completely different faces with opposite emotions. Mirroring the right side of the face reveals a cheesy grin, 
while mirroring the left side reveals an angry frown. The twisted smile is peculiar to the Western world and can only be done deliberately, which means it can send only one message – sarcasm. Number 3. The drop jaw smile. This is a practiced smile where the lower jaw is simply dropped down to give the impression that the person is laughing or playful. This is a favorite of people such as Hillary Clinton and Marilyn Monroe, and all whom use it to engender happy reactions in their audiences or to win more votes. Number 4. Sideways looking up smile. With a head turned down and away, while looking up with a smile or tight-lipped smile, the person smiling looks playful and secretive. This smile has been shown to be men's favorite everywhere, because when a woman does it, it engenders parental male feelings, making men want to protect and care for females. Number 5. Fake smile, grin. The zygomaticus majors pull the mouth back to expose the teeth and enlarge the cheeks, while the orbicularized oculi are not involved. Number 6. Genuine smile. Mouth muscles move, cheeks rise, eyes crease up and eyebrows deep slightly. A smile is never expressive of a single emotion. It expresses multiple emotions, as is evident in this video and as we would discuss later on. And at the same time, this interestingly is also a mask which people often wear to hide more negative emotions. A smile may involve several muscles, muscles which are around the mouth, muscles on our cheeks and muscles around our eyes also. People normally smile when they are happy, but very soon all of us learn to pass on polite social smiles without exactly feeling happy. Because as a smiling face is considered to be polite and often considered to be necessity during all of our social and professional interaction. And therefore, a smiling face does not necessarily communicate a particular or a specific emotional state of mind. At best, we say that a smile is a multi-purpose expression. Normal interpretation of a smile is associated with positivity and happiness. And all of us are aware of that emoji, the smiling face, the universal symbol of happiness. But at the same time, in the professional world, we have to be aware that our smile can also be used as a mask. Smiles communicate different connotations and at the same time there are certain cultural associations which are also associated with the way we smile and the way in which we interpret the smile of other people. Also the occasions on which we would like to smile and we would not like to smile. For example, in Japan as well as in certain other countries, a smile can also indicate a concealment of embarrassment, displeasure or even anger. Alan Pease in his writings has listed five common types of smiles, but later on research has added some more types. The five common types of smiles which have been listed by Alan Pease are the tight-lipped smile, the twisted smile, the drop jaw smile, sideways looking up smile and interestingly the name of the fifth smile identified by Alan Pease is the George W. Bush grin. Now Alan Pease instead of illustrating this grin completely as an independent communication of emotion has linked it with a cultural pattern. Pease has commented that people in Texas particularly in the middle class sections of the society pass on too much smiles. And therefore, his understanding is that in Texas, people smile more than people of other American states. And therefore, the almost continuous but imperceptible grin, which was normally found on the face of George W. Bush, has been given this name. In my discussions, I would leave this particular type of smile. I would take up the first four common types of smiles listed by Ellen Pease and supplement them with some other commonly found types of smiles which have been listed by other researchers. Here I would also like to mention Carney Landis who had worked in 1924 and had identified nine different types of smiles. But his researches had come up with this finding that only six types of smiles are associated with positive connotations. 
the wrists are either negative or a mask. Initial researches into what can be understood as the science of smiles were taken up as we have commented earlier by Darwin and at the same time they were taken up by the French neurologist Duchenne Boulogne who had studied the mechanics of facial expressions and particularly had tried to identify the association of different muscles which are present on our face and what type of muscles are used in which type of emotion communication through our smiles. He had as an experiment attached electrodes to faces and his most talked about experiments resulted in a permanent fixture of white grin on a particular patient's face who had to spend rest of his life with puffed up cheeks and crow's feet around his eyes. This experiment had gone wrong but at the same time this does not undermine the significance of the rest of his research. Another research which is often talked about in our studies of smile is by Carney Landis. It was in 1924 when he was a research scholar in the University of Minnesota and he was experimenting on the facial expressions of emotions. He gathered together a group of people, a motley group which consisted of some friends, some classmates, some young teachers as well as a young teenager boy and he wanted to find out whether different experiences brought similar facial expressions for them. His methods today cannot be considered ethical. However, it was his findings which created more unease and still researchers go back to these findings. He had gathered together this group, blindfolded them, put markers on their faces to identify what type of muscles are active in a particular type of facial response and then he had asked them to undergo different types of experimentations. He had exposed them, these blindfolded people to some interesting and rather bizarre experimentations. Some of them included bursting crackers beneath their seats. An experiment included putting one's hands in a bucket full of live frogs and ultimately he asked a person to deliberately cut the throat of a mouse or a rodent. Although it must also be indicated here that in his later life he never repeated this experiment but the findings which he stumbled upon as a young research scholar in 1924 are still talked about. He had said and I quote that even during the most violent task and some of them were the most common reaction was not either to cry or to express anger, it was to smile and I quote, so far as this experiment goes, I have found no expression other than a smile which was present in enough photographs to be considered as typical of any situation. Psychologists later on talked about the different types of smiles which has been you know validated by these experiments by Carney Landis and they also talked about how willingly people had been obedient during this experiment going to certain extent in order to follow the instructions. But this is not exactly concerned with our discussions. Carney Landis identified 19 different types of smiles but suggested that only 6 are associated with the expression of positivity. The rest occur when either we are in pain, we may feel embarrassed or distressed or miserable etc. Sometimes it may also mean contempt, a suspicion towards the motives of the other people as well as a feeling of willingly submitting to others. Genuine smiles are a reward for positive actions and feelings and there are some other smiles which do not represent true feelings, rather they represent the emotion which we want to signal to others. With the help of an artificial smile, a plastic smile or a synthetic smile, we want to present a particular emotion to our interactant 
and we want to hide the negativity of our emotions using this mask of a smile. So, some smiles have evolved to signal that we are not being threatening in a particular situation rather we are being cooperative that we do not want any aggression in a situation, but at the same time the smile can also be used to suggest well I am better than you in any given interaction. So, many are used as polite gestures which demonstrate that we are following the rules or we do not want to deliberately offend a person. At the same time smiles can also be used in an effective way as manipulating agents distracting the other people from understanding our true feelings. Before going further into understanding different types of smiles we must understand how to differentiate between a genuine and a fake smile. Genuine smiles always necessarily represent a positive emotion and fake smiles do not. It is particularly important to identify the difference because our response to the smile often influences our first interactions with other people. It makes us comfortable in a presence, it makes us to feel cautious in a particular presence. Normally it is said that a full blown smile is genuine, a full blown smile in which the eyes are also lit up is perhaps the most infectious aspect of our interaction with other people. In a full blown smile if it is accompanied by a person's head going slightly in we find that the person is feeling rather humble. On the other hand, if a person is smiling openly and broadly, but the head has a backward tilt, then the person is not only pleased, but the person is also proud of oneself in the given situation. For example, we can ask a student, oh, how is your examination? The student had fared well and would say, oh, it was good. Look at the head tilt. On the other hand, the same person can say, oh, it was good. So, you would find that the amount of pleasure is the same, but the other associations are also communicated with the association of a particular type of head tilt. A fake smile similarly is used to create a mask, a barrier between us and other people to hide the true emotion and there are certain distinct differences to identify the two independently. In case of genuine smiles, people smile both with their eyes and mouth. This is a smile in which we say that the person's eyes were also smiling and in fake smiles we find that the smile is given only with the help of the mouth. Similarly, if you are able to notice the difference then genuine smiles are often more symmetrical on both sides of the face and have a much more gradual onset and particularly the much more gradual offset than fake smiles. A simple way to tell the difference is to watch how does the smile fade on an individual's face. Does it end quickly or does it linger? A lingering smile is associated with a positive and a genuine smile. On the other hand, a fake smile is normally taken up by a person, used by a person to cover the real emotional state. French anatomist Duchin de Boulogne had noted these differences and he has remarked that genuine smiles involve facial musculature around the eyes, whereas false smiles just involve the activation of the muscles around the mouth. And this basic difference has always been identified in our language practices, in our idioms and proverbs as well as in different literary representations of human face. This basic understanding of Duchenne was later on supported by Paul Ekman and Willis Friesen and was further strengthened. They further described the difference between the genuine and fake smiles and I quote from their research. They say that in genuine smiles, which have been termed as Duchenne smiles, in honor of the work of the great French anatomist, 
muscles lift the cheek upwards and push the skin towards the eyes narrowing the eyes and causing crow's feet wrinkles at the outer corners of the eyes for several decades we find that the presence of the crow's feet the mild wrinkles around our eyes were considered to be an indication of genuine smiles later on however it was found that it is not necessary that everybody has the similar type of wrinkles in some faces the crow's feet may not be present at all on the other hand in false or plastic smiles we find that the muscles pull the lips obliquely upwards and back deepening the furrows which run from the nostril to the corners of the lips in this particular video we find that a detailed analysis of smiles of certain us presidential candidates has been done without commenting on the political belief systems i have tried to use this video as an illustration of genuine and fake smiles Body language expert Tanya Ryman studied all the leading presidential candidates like Bernie Sanders who sure has a lot to smile about after that double digit victory over Hillary Clinton in New Hampshire. Bernie Sanders is authentic. He's always genuine. This is a genuine smile. You could tell he's got the creases, the cheeks are raised, but it's not as big as it typically is when he's thoroughly happy. But in her opinion, when Hillary smiles, she's sometimes covering up what she's really thinking. Hillary Clinton has a problem with smiling. She smiles just to mask whatever emotion she doesn't want you to see. This is known as a social smile. There's not much movement around the eyes and the lips aren't really elevated. They're across but not high up. And Ted Cruz also has some work to do on his smile. When he smiles, the initial impression is that of a sneer or a contemptuous grin. And then what happens? We think of him as sarcastic. So, I would end my discussion at this point. in our next module we would look at certain other types of smiles the cultural differences which also exist in the way our smiles are recognized thank you